We are living in an exciting time for breast cancer research. It's a feeling of great pride to be working in medicine development. Not only are we getting new medications, but I think finally the doctors and the researchers and the scientists are realizing we can do something new, we can do something different. What we're hoping for is this is going to continue to increase the survival rate of patients and ultimately lead to more time for those patients with their loved ones. Invasive breast cancer spreads from where it began in the breast to surrounding normal tissue. 13% of U.S. women will develop invasive breast cancer in their lifetime. I was one of them. I am currently inside a hyperbaric chamber. In 2019, I was diagnosed with stage 3 breast cancer. Along the way, I documented my treatment journey, from chemo to surgery, radiation, antibody infusions, and targeted therapies. After decades of aggressive chemo being the norm, we're finally seeing huge advancements in new treatments and therapeutics. And I wanted to find out what's next in the fight against breast cancer. Today, I get to sit down with two of the leading scientists from Pfizer Labs in La Jolla, California, to learn more about their groundbreaking breast cancer research. A lot of exciting work is being done right here on campus. And today, we'll get to take a look at the process behind the groundbreaking science that has the potential to save lives. I'm the VP of Tumor Biology, which really is I'm leading a group of about 55 scientists that are focused on understanding how tumor cells work. A cancer cell basically has evolved to not recognize signals from the outside to stop growing. So there are mutations that happen as cells proliferate. One thing that's very challenging is just how quickly they can mutate and all the different mutations that, that can evolve over time. And so, you know, we'll come in with one medicine that's targeting a specific lesion, um, and then the tumor just will rewire and find a way to get around that particular therapy. So this is basically where all the research is starting. So this is where our scientists are starting to understand what's happening in those tumor cells. And we are starting to look at how our potential therapies are affecting the growth of those tumor cells. So this is our tissue culture lab. What you're seeing here is discovery research at work. Mostly what you hear about in the news is when a therapy is finally approved. But what we're doing here is this early testing where these potential medicines, we're looking to see what effects they're having on the cancer cells. Some of the really important treatments that have evolved sort of in the last 10 years has been combination therapies. So as a cell divides, it goes through something called the cell cycle. And I think one of the big discoveries has been that you can combine these endocrine therapies together with a therapy that will prevent a cell from dividing. So the folks in my lab are working to really understand preclinically how these medicines are going to combine. And then Natasha and her team use that information to design clinical trials. This is the lab space. Okay. About a century ago, we discovered that we had the tools and the technology to surgically remove the cancer lump or mass, but often when there is surgery, then the cancer uh, tends to come back. But in the recent times, we have now come about with things called targeted therapies. The toughest challenge that we face is finding that targeted therapy option and, and overcoming the resistance that develops with, uh, with breast cancer. And is the resistance the part of what makes cancer such a formidable opponent? That is exactly right. There is definitely uh, hope and uh, we are studying these, these resistance mechanisms. 10, 20 years ago, you would come in and be diagnosed with breast cancer and everyone was sort of treated the same, given the same chemotherapy. But now, because we understand much more what's happening at a molecular level, we're able to develop therapies that are specific for those molecular changes. What we're hoping for is this is gonna continue to increase the, um, the survival rate of, of patients and ultimately lead to more time for those patients with their families and, and their loved ones. My name is Danette Joy Walker. I am a mother, I am an artist, and I'm also an advocate. 
I was first diagnosed with breast cancer in 2014, and then um, everything was free and clear. Then a year later, I was diagnosed with metastatic breast cancer. So it came back and it spread. Going through the treatment, I had two children and you know, I told the kids, I was like, you know, it's gonna be another, <laughs> you know, challenging time, but we're gonna get through this. Does it bring you a lot of optimism to see how quickly the treatments are changing and evolving? 15 years ago, things were so different. And now I feel like just as technology rises and the researchers and the scientists and the doctors who are really getting this idea, they're like, okay, like this person is diagnosed with cancer. This is what we can do. These are the new treatments that we have. I think patient visibility is really key. And with technology now, people are able to share their stories more. My hope is that with the more people see, the more that they can sort of take that burden off of themselves. I definitely feel empowered when I share because I feel like, first of all, as a black woman, I am truly invisible to most. And there's a lot of unequal treatment. For me particularly, the more that I share my story, what I had to do to get treatment, I think that's an important message to let people know, like, we're here and please pay attention to us. The more that we can connect, the more that we can teach each other, we can learn new and different strategies, new and different techniques. Make it normal, make it real, have the conversation. Think of the things that bring you joy in your life. Think of what you're living for and live for that. I'm just so grateful, I'm grateful. Yeah.